Greetings, fellow travelers. Today we will trek through Amazon and beyond cloud forest islands in the sky. Upon entering, Zoo Miami introduces us to cloud forest and tells us how they are cloaked in mist and mystery. Rising up like islands in the sky, they form where mountainsides stir warm, moist, tropical air upward into cool, high places. Flying, slithering, and prowling through these isolated worlds are animals found nowhere else in the world. The creatures of the cloud forest see us a thousand times before we see them once. The first exhibit we come across in the cloud forest is home to the black howler monkey, which we just glimpsed, and the golden lion tamarind. In the 1970s, there were as few as 200 golden lion tamarinds in the wild. Today, despite heroic conservation efforts, fewer than 2,000 remain in the wild. About one-third of the wild population today originated from golden lion tamarinds raised in human care. A short walk down the path brings us to a walk through aviary, and here we learn that the Amazon rainforest is home to over 1,000 species of birds, many of which are endangered due to pet trade and the destruction of habitat. In this aviary, we will be able to spot 10 of these species and two species of turtles. In the streams below, we'll catch glimpses of the Chiapas giant musk and Hilaire's side neck turtles. In the trees and among the rocks, we can spot morning doves, black spotted barbettes, the beautiful trupial, We'll also catch glimpses of the silver beak tanager and the blue gray tanager. Outside the aviary, we continue down the path and come to the cloud forest building. Inside, we will learn about the legend of Quetzalcoatl, as well as find 19 terrariums housing 21 species of reptiles, amphibians, and insects. On the left side of the first room, we will spot the eyelash viper, named for the large scales above their eyes. Plumed basculus, when threatened, they flee and have the capability of running on top of the water on their hind legs. Brazilian lancehead, moms give birth to live young, and newborns are venomous and ready to strike. Jumping viper, these stout snakes strike with such force that they supposedly can launch themselves off the ground. The ability has been greatly exaggerated, but the name is stuck. In the middle of the room, we'll find a display that tells us about each of the four areas that the Amazon and beyond represents. Making our way down the right side of the first room, we'll find a mixed species habitat housed in the Central American tree boa and green and black poison dart frog. You're a cone rattlesnake. This venomous pit viper is found only in Venezuela. Bushmaster. For days at a time, this snake will wait patiently in one place before ambushing a passing mill. Mexican cantil. Young cantels have a yellow tail and will wiggle it in front of their head to act as a lure, enticing prey who may mistake it for a worm. A small hallway houses two exhibits featuring a tiger rat snake. This non-venomous snake vibrates the tip of its tail and hisses loudly to ward off hungry predators. These hunters rely on their keen eyesight to spot food, and despite their large size, they can move swiftly through the trees as well as on land. Across the hallway, we'll find a mixed species exhibit home to giant waxy monkey frogs and tree lizards. Going down the left side of the second room, we'll find a yellow-headed poison dart frog. Anthony's poison dart frog. Central American forest cockroach. Tricolored hognose snake and the yellow anaconda. These snakes prefer aquatic habitats, and much of their generalized diet includes animals that inhabit the same niche. 
Although these snakes do not grow as large as the green anaconda, they are still the second largest found in South America, and females typically are larger than males. As we make our way down the right side of the room, we'll come to the last displays in the Cloud Forest building. Here we'll find the side striped palm viper, alligator lizard, named for its bony plated scales like those of an alligator. Red eyed tree frogs with their striking red eyes that startle and scare off snakes and other predators. Panamanian golden frog, the deadly scythrid skin fungus appears to be killing off this frog, which is a national symbol in Panama. Exiting the Cloud Force building and a small hike down the path, we come to the first of two Jaguar yards. Here we learn that the Jaguar's natural forest habitat is becoming increasingly fragmented because of expanding cities, logging, and burning. Jaguars need safe habitats where they can hunt, travel, rest, and raise their families. The World Wildlife Fund is working to protect and restore wilderness areas that reconnect fragmented habitats. This work not only benefits jaguars, but thousands of other species as well. Moving up the path, we'll get a glimpse of the overhead passage between both yards, as well as the side views into each yard. These powerful and beautiful cats were very prominent in ancient Native American cultures. In some traditions, the jaguar god of the night was the formidable lord of the underworld. Ancient Mayans viewed jaguars as symbols of power. Mayan royalty wore jaguar robes and masks. Even today, shamans imitate jaguars during dramatic ceremonies. The jaguar is a compact and well-muscled animal, the largest cat in the New World, and the largest carnivorous mammal in Central and South America. Like a ghost, this cat prowls unseen through the jungle. Its spots, or rosettes, which usually break up its body shape, help it hide in underbrush. Its large, soft foot pads help it sneak up on prey. The next viewing area for the Jaguars is a cave view. And past the cave view, we'll get one final view into the Jaguar exhibit. The present range of the Jaguar extends from Mexico through Central America into South America. The habitat of the cat includes the rainforest of South and Central America, as well as open, seasonally flooded wetlands, as well as dry grassland terrain. The jaguar prefers dense forest with thick cover, which helps it stalk prey and has lost most of its range in regions of drier habitat. The second aviary sits right across from the last view of the jaguar habitat, and here we will find the sun bittern, which uses its striped and spotted feathers as camouflage. It stalks insects and frogs along jungle streams. Green arasari. These birds can feed on as many as 100 different varieties of fruit. Green jays have been observed bathing in smoke near smoldering logs as an aid to rid their plumage of parasites. Just past the jaguars, we'll come to a dual habitat housing giant horn lizards and the blue rock lizard. Garfield Dose poison dart frog. A multi-species habitat where we can catch glimpses of the Colombian tegu, caiman lizard, side neck turtle, and freshwater river rays. On our way out, we'll get one more view from the side of the second aviary. as well as pass by a playground. This will conclude our trek through Cloud Forest, Islands in the Sky. Thank you for joining me on this journey into Amazon and beyond. 
This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone. <laughs>